Tonight's top EU stories from the UNIT website include The stolen referendum European court robs Britain a vote by overturning a UK opt-out With your help, this plan might just save the bees European Union creates export group to study how to tax digital companies and Bulgarian Parliament approves extensions of ban on farmland sale to foreigners until 2020. Plus, local authorities and civil society under EU control. I'm Rick Timmis and this is the Unit Nightly News. First, from our homepage. OK, before we start, I am raising the red flag on this story. This is critical and absolutely key. If this story holds up to scrutiny, then, my friends, we're toast. A European court's ruling effectively overturning Britain's opt-out to the Charter on Fundamental Rights has robbed the UK of a referendum Tory MPs are claiming. Their dismay follows comments from a High Court judge yesterday making clear that Britain's watertight opt-out has been rendered meaningless by the European Court of Justice. The UK secured its opt-out during the Lisbon Treaty negotiations, meaning the Charter's numerous rights, including the right to strike and right to marry, did not apply in Britain. But... Mr Justice Mostyn said yesterday that a ruling from the European Courts of Justice in 2011 made clear the opt-out did not exempt the UK from the obligations to comply with the provisions of the Charter. He added, the constitutional significance of this can hardly be overstated. Now can I just hop in with a quote from Edward Heath? He said, I need hardly mention that there is no threat to essential sovereignty. Lies. Here is a clear testimony of an act of treason. Now, if the government had proposed a treaty change to include the Charter of Fundamental Rights into British law, that would have triggered a referendum under the EU bill. So the court has just circumvented a referendum. Now, Bill Cash asked, what can be done to stop this coach and horses going through acts of parliament, invading our supremacy, and what can you and Mr Speaker do to defend this parliament? Cash also told Politics UK his party leadership's attempt to blame Labour was unfair because David Cameron's shadow cabinet had rejected his call for the Lisbon Treaty legislation to explicitly state the Charter of Fundamental Rights would not apply to UK law. It couldn't be worse, he said. Well, Keith Vaz, the chair of the Commons Home Affairs Committee, famously said in 2000 that the Charter of Fundamental Rights had no more legal effect than a copy of the Beano. However, Tim Aker, head of policy at UKIP, said David Cameron was presiding over a pathetically weak administration that's not prepared to stand up to Strasbourg on the issue. Once again, we see that Tory Euroscepticism is a pipe dream rather than a working reality, he commented. Now, if this stands, folks, then we're in trouble, and here's why. British law is based upon case law and legal precedents. What it enables is a legal system that operates by forbidding certain things, and anything that is not expressly forbidden is legal. And as a free people, you can do what you like, so long as the law does not say that you cannot. The Charter of Fundamental Rights is the EU Constitution's book. This is a massive book. It's some 400 pages of close-typed rules and regulations. And under this European legal charter, if the book doesn't say you have the right to do it, then under law, you don't. And that, my friends, is why I do this. Because this is not just tomfoolery or crank conspiracy. The assimilation of every nation-state into a mandated federal state of Europe has been the goal all along. This is the end game, folks. If we don't act now, then we will be unable to act ever. Help us. Tell your friends about us. Get them to sign up for our newsletter. Organise a public event and get in touch with Andrew Fear at our response unit. He will help you with speakers, information, DVDs, etc. Write to me. I will cover your emails on the nightly news. Write articles for our website. And, of course, follow us on Twitter. 
Subscribe to our YouTube channel and share our videos far and wide. They're all CC licensed for that very purpose. And of course, join our community on Google+. If not today, folks, then when? Now today, we really need your help. As you'll know from the nightly news reports and on our website, there has been much controversy over the decline of the bee population. Now, we have been reporting on the legal challenge between Bayer and Syngenta and the European Union as they battle over whether or not to allow the continued use of neonicotinoid pesticides, which have been blamed for the decline in bee populations. Now, we have a great article in our letters section written by Edwin Spisons, a member of the unit community on Google+. Edwin is involved with Some of Us, a voluntary organisation that is targeting PR and media towards Syngenta and Bayer and the EU case in an effort to defend the bee populations. Now, make no bones about this situation. Bee population decline is absolutely happening, and this is a very dire threat to the natural world, and more importantly, directly to us. Our agriculture, without the bees, there is simply no pollination, no fruit, no berries, and no plant life cycle. The Some of Us group are taking the fight to Bayer and Syngenta and looking to make a big noise about this issue to ensure that the EU upholds this legislation and they need our help. So please go take a look at their website. The links are below and see what you can do to help them out with this one. And a very big thanks to Edwin Spisons for bringing us on board with this one. European Union experts will study how to tax the digital economy and recommend next steps for making sure technology companies pay their fair share, the European Commission said. A high-level expert group will be assembled to identify problems and recommend solutions. The Brussels-based Commission will then make proposals on how to implement the recommendations. Currently, corporate tax avoidance and aggressive tax planning are particularly problematic in the digital economy, the Commission said. And this is due to the global and intangible nature of these companies and the fact that today's tax rules were not designed with e-commerce in mind. Now, we've asked our legislative research team to keep a watchful eye on this. Our bet is that this will result in EU-wide taxation systems. And you can rest assured that that's going to cost more not less. We'll keep you posted as the story develops. Bulgaria's parliament has approved an extension of the ban on the sale of farmland to foreigners until 2020, defying warnings by the European Union. Lawmakers on Tuesday voted 171 to 38 in favour of a mo motion introduced by the Nationalist Party, Attica, extending the ban by seven years. Although Bulgaria had pledged when it joined the EU in 2007 that the ban would be lifted on January the 1st next year. Now, economically, Bulgaria is weak. Asset values are low and compared to other EU countries, their land is a bargain. Well, this is the reason behind the EU expansion programme into economically struggling states. Big corporations can buy national assets at bargain basement prices, giving them control of resources and production. This is exactly what has happened to the UK since we joined in 1972. At the time, Britain was described as the sick man of Europe. With inflation at 27%, the UK had to go to the IMF cap in hand to avoid economic collapse. We were welcomed with open arms into the EU, but the price we paid was the destruction of our national balance sheet. There have been many developments of late at both EU level and international level, which have focused on more ambitious partnerships with civil society organisations and local authorities. These developments have been based on the principles of human rights, including economic, social and cultural rights, as well as international treaties on environment and biodiversity protection and democracy and accountability. The report sets out that democratic responsibility lies not just with the governments, but also the CSOs and local authorities, and of course national parliaments. For these play a vital role in linking citizens with the government. Don't you just love the EU rhetoric? 
democratic responsibility. That's the sophisticated way of saying, if you don't do what we say, then you're a right-wing fascist neo-Nazi freedom-hating gimboid. Now, this report has some absolute nuggets in it. But what does it all mean? Well, my take is this is the EU creating policy to give it control over local authority agenda frameworks. Now, I have talked about this before. An agenda framework is where what appears to be a free thinking board or panel is actually operating within a framework. The previous story is a great example. The Bulgarians want to retain a law that protects their land from sale to anyone outside the country. The national policymakers cannot enact this because the EU law forbids it. So the Bulgarians either breach the framework or work within it. Now, because much of the civil service in the UK uses the rule book as a Bible, then when setting agendas for discussion, anything that is outside of EU bounds cannot be discussed or enacted. So you can see that the EU, with this framework cleverly and discreetly, controls the nation-state's public policymakers like animatronic puppets on a string. This is a great legislative article and well worth your time to take a look. Today in our video library, yesterday we reported on the EU referendum YouGov poll that reported 39% want to leave the EU and an equal 39% want to remain in. Frankly, I think these figures are trumped up purely for media effect. However, we set up our own poll and some of you have already been clicking your mouse and voting. And right now the figures look wildly different from the YouGov poll, with 97% of you wanting to leave and just 2% wanting to remain in. Well, we're pushing this on Twitter and social media and email, and we really need your help to spread the word. Ideally, we would like to see a thousand votes placed in this poll, so please help us out by telling as many people as you can about it. Now, returning back to our critical story, the EU Charter of Fundamental Rights, don't just take my word for it. How about hearing it from this pretty Irish girl? A vivacious young female always softens the blow, don't you think? Charter of Fundamental Rights of the European Union A document listing EU citizens' civil, political, social and economic rights under a range of headings. Some of the headings include general principles rather than particular rights, while other rights are said to be subject to national laws. The Charter was drafted in 2000, but only became part of the EU law when the Treaty of Lisbon came into effect in December 2009. So, there you have it folks. The EU Charter of Fundamental Rights, your rule book, a document listing EU citizens' civil, political, social and economic rights under a range of headings. I'm Rick Timmis, reporting for the unit Nightly News. I'll see you soon. <laughs>